Welcome back to the Viaduct Generation podcast, The Wise Build Bridges. This is our season two finale, and I am so excited to have the wonderful Crystal Carter on the podcast with me today. Welcome, Crystal. Thank you so much. I'm so here to be on this wonderful, so pleased to be on this wonderful <laughs> podcast. Um, thank you for inviting me. It's, uh, yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited to get into it today because I feel like we've had lots of like passing moments at events yeah. and things like that. And yeah, so I'm excited to dig a little deeper. For those of you who maybe just aren't on the internet and don't know who <laughs> Crystal is, I'm going to give you guys a little intro. So Crystal Carter is the head of SEO communications at Wix. She's an SEO and digital marketing professional with over 15 years experience working with SEO and marketing clients around the world like Disney, McDonald's, Tommy and more. She has contributed to events, webinars and publications from Google Search Central, Brighton SEO, Moz, White Spark Local Search Summit, the list goes on. Um, she is also co-host of the SEPS Up SEO podcast for Wix. Welcome, welcome, Crystal. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, so to all you podcast folks, um, after you finish listening to this fantastic podcast, um, yes, we are also on the Surps of Pessia podcast with my my colleague, uh, my co-host uh, in chief, uh, Mr. Morty Overstein. Yes, love it. And honestly, it is such a little handy podcast. It comes out twice a week. Am I correct? So normally we do, normally we do every Wednesday. Right. Um, but then we also uh, recently we had a um, Google IO and I was like, oh, my God, we should totally do like a hot take. So we did like yes. a like a real hot take um, stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it because this really gives like timing as to when we're recording this. Funnily enough, like the majority of the episodes from this season, I actually recorded back in January and have been <laughs> slowly streaming that out. So this will probably be a bit more of a timely one, actually. So I'm really excited to have Crystal on the podcast as anybody who knows her knows that you are so good at shining a light on others. And so I'm really excited to have the opportunity to shine that light right back onto <laughs> you, get to know you a little bit better. Um, and yeah, and like really understand who, who Crystal is. Uh, let's get <laughs> philosophical up in here. Okay. Um, so I actually want to take it all the way back to the beginning, because as you will hear, Crystal doesn't have the accent of someone typically from Devon. <laughs> um, so I want to kind of get a bit of backstory. Um, talk to me a bit about kind of like where you grew up and how you kind of fell into SEO and maybe the UK. In the first okay. Place. Okay. So yeah, people ask me this a lot and then I have to give like my whole life story. So, um, uh, um, long, long time ago, um, I was not that long ago. I mean, like what, long enough ago. Anyway, I'm grown, whatever. Um, so I was born in Los Angeles, California. Um, and, um, and my, um, and I grew up with my mom and my dad. I've got a sister. Um, we've had various dogs. Anyway, um, we, um, so, so I grew up in Los Angeles or, well, I didn't, I'm a military brat. So I lived okay. in lots of different places. So I lived in, I was born in Los Angeles. I lived in lots of different places. I went to uni and, um, at, at Kenyon college in America In America, they call it a college. If you haven't been, if it doesn't have, um, postgraduate, um, oh. which is different from college in the UK, which is just what you do after high school. Yes. It's Anyway, so I went to Kenyon College, which is a fantastic school. Um, like shout out to uh, Gambier, Ohio, um, <laughs> and there they have they they have a program called the Kenyon Exeter Program. They've been running it for over forty years, and basically every year they send a whole class of students from Kenyon to Exeter University. Oh, um, nice. And so in America, you do four years of university. In my third year, I did uh, I did that. Um, yeah. So I went and did the Kenny Exeter uh, program and I met my now husband. We fell in love, la, la, la. Um, and then and then I went back for my last year of uni and we did the phone thing. And then and then we were, we were like, I was like, how do I get back to my love? I love him. Love. <laughs> I'm so in love. Um, and so we went and we got um, and so he was coming to visit me anyway. And I was like let's get married so like we just we like went and got married in las vegas you know caesar's palace yes 
I got married across the street from Caesar's Palace. Oh my God. And, um, yeah. So we did that. And then I moved back to the UK. Um, and then, and he was based in Exeter. We stayed in Exeter. I love, I love um, Devon. Um, I think it's a great place uh, to live. It's like beautiful and there's sunshine yeah. and there's, um, and there's cows <laughs> and like having like having grown up in like cities and suburbs and stuff like I still get excited when I see a tractor I'm like look there's tractors and like I'm like if I see sheep I'm like there's sheep look at you you're all yeah. happy and stuff That's amazing cool. um and I like frolic and like forage <laughs> and play on streams and these are things that you know I I think it's amazing that 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 I'm able to do. It's one of the things that I think is great about about England. There's so much common common space. There's so much mm. like you know just places where you can just like play in a stream or like do yeah. sticks or like <laughs> build a den, like all that all that sort of stuff. And I think I just really really love that. And I think it's um I, yeah I really enjoy that. So amazing, yeah. a city turned country gal. <laughs> oh yeah, but do you know what? My favorite thing to do is to rock up to a, like a national trust property, like wearing like really towny clothes. So like. <laughs> wear like giant hoop earrings and like like big like high top shoes and like ridiculous like leopard print like I they literally like that. it's my favorite and then I, and then I'm like oh but have you seen the nasturtions oh and <laughs> the starlings are roosting and like, <laughs> like, like oh, would you, would I you love that, that just like go up and confuse people just like oh, yeah, who I, is she <laughs> I, I just, it just really cracks me up <laughs> amazing um, that's incredible and I, I love that you you've kind of done that transition it must feel like still kind of surreal at times like in terms of that being your reality yeah I do know I find I find that like it's really uh, people in Devon are so warm and friendly yeah I really love it but also people say oh Devon and California they're really different but like actually they're not that different mm. because in California like it's very beachy Devon's very beachy. Yeah. Um, in California, there's lots of different um, there's lots of different like uh, landscapes. So there's mountains, and there's the beach, and there's the desert, and there's you know forests and stuff. And in yeah. Devon, the moors, there's the beaches, there's the forests, there's like lots of different lots of different stuff as well. And also like I, I think people forget that California is also very agricultural as well. It's like um, right. I mean, to, in fact, to get statistically, I mean, it's the breadbasket of the world. I'm just saying, oh, like, please. you know, like we get those, <laughs> yeah, it's like you know, shout out shout out to everybody in Central California like picking all them <laughs> grapes and like, <laughs> make it yeah up. we need wine from somewhere don't we <laughs> right right precisely precisely come through whites and Vendel. like yes. okay. <laughs> amazing uh love that um so now now that we've we've placed you in exeter um i like to do little linkedin deep dives try and get as much information as i can on my okay. guests on the internet okay okay um, and i saw that you worked for the city council as a parks promotion and events officer and honestly like straight away i was like it's parks and rec like <laughs> was it at all like parks and rec yeah so so the parks so like i was literally working in like i was working like at the parks department like we had like tractors to like mow the like to mow the fields for the baseball fields like you know oh, we would talk about like bulb planting and trees like i know like tons of stuff about like trees and like and like i op we we opened basketball courts like i court like i like i i got to i i would do things like the, the great thing about about that team and these are the teams where I tend to drop to thrive in and I've been really fortunate to be able to find teams like this but my my manager there was just like yeah cool I was like I have ideas they were like great let's do some ideas and yeah. and so I was like let's have a basketball tournament and so we had like arranged this like massive basketball tournament because I was like there's tons of people that play but we don't have it and we have this like big basketball tournament and we did all the things and I was doing like I was doing um basically I was promoting the parks I was also managing the parks at the venue and every time we had like events and stuff, I was doing marketing for them and I was mm. doing stuff online and I was man and managing the website for all of those. I was also doing tons of citation management. Um, I was doing tons of like taking photos of the things and uploading them to social and doing lots, lots of stuff like that. So all of the things I was doing to promote them, they were all like SEO stuff and like they yeah. were all like digital marketing stuff. And it was really much like very much at the fore of, um, of, like that becoming like businesses starting to realize that like oh this is actually effective and then you know I was right. like you know, we can save money we can like improve our reach like all of that sort of stuff um and with regards to like like the team it was also very much like a little bit Parks and Rex like I was a little like it was you know they were like who is this like random girl from Los Angeles who's, like <laughs> He's talking, to us about, right? She's talking to us I was like it's national tree week let's go get these trees <laughs> like they were like what are you talking about um but like what I found was and this is something I really think is important is um, something that I, I've been thinking a lot about is like, 
managing, not necessarily managing, but like engaging your stakeholders, like genuinely engaging yes. your stakeholders and, acts, and and recognizing your stakeholders are not just management. Your stakeholders mm. are not just, um, you know, your direct line, but your stakeholders are also your colleagues. Yeah. And what I found was like, I was like, hey, I want to do an idea. And at first they were like, oh, we did that in 1976 and we're not doing it again. <laughs> and like, and I was like, oh, but what about this? And we're like, nope, not doing it. And so I thought, and so I was finding, I was like, oh, I'm not sure. But you know, one, one of the things that was a real turning point was, um, so I was working with a team that had lots of like very, um, very seasoned uh, um, uh, gardening professionals, mm -hmm. um, landscaping, horticultural professionals. Um, and and like they've been working there for years. Yeah. And the um, there's there's Devon County Show, which is a giant. It's like massive, massive event um, uh, down here in the West Country. And um, and they had an award for people who'd been working in um, in horticulture for over 20 years. And and I was like, I got like 25 of them people. And basically, yeah. I I registered everybody. I I put Incredible. everyone up for I this award. That. And like it went like, you know, this like the guy who was the head of the thing got interviewed on the radio and, you know, they they had like the the archdiocese gave them all awards and they yeah. were in the newspaper and they were all over this. And, you know, they got all dressed up and everybody, you know, they were like VIP treatment and they all got awards and like all that sort of stuff. After that, they were like, Crystal, what are we doing? You want a basketball I love tournament? That, yeah. Let's do the basketball tournament. And I'm like, yeah. cool, like, let's go. And it's one of those things like I think that. Um, I'm very much about like like big up your team. And you were saying like I like to shine. Like it's important yes, to, exactly. to like pay yeah. attention to your team, pay attention to your squad because everyone is like everyone is so valuable and people just want to feel valuable. People want to feel yeah. valuable and people are valuable. So like value them and tell you tell them that you care about I, them. I honestly I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I'm so like I'm so that person who jumps on like praising, uplifting, like what yeah. is there to lose in that moment? There's literally nothing to lose. Right, right. Like just like like give and like and like and you know you will get you will get it back in return and like you know don't do that for that reason but like but you know just remember 100%. that like people will people will appreciate you and like and and so so yeah do that and I think that um and it absolutely applies to like you know real world stuff digital stuff all of the mm. things um and and so that was something that that I really really learned learned from that and um. And yeah, I had a great time there. It was a fantastic amazing. job. I did amazing stuff. Like Yeah. Really you very, very lightly touched, but I actually wanted to dig into it a bit more. Did you find a bit of a difference in terms of being an American? So kind of like an export into a kind of what I would imagine was a very British kind of institution. Like in terms of culture, in terms of like work culture, how did you navigate that? Like were you like super aware of the differences and told yourself like maybe I need to adjust or were you like I am bringing like all of me to this and you are going to take it? <laughs> so I think that um, from my perspective I mentioned that I was a military brat like yeah. I went to 13 different schools growing up so mm. I've the, the process of like meeting a new group of people is something that I'm you know very it. familiar with. Yeah. Um, so, you know, whether it's moving for, like moving from New Jersey to California or moving from from moving from from Ohio to mm. to Exeter, like meeting a new group of people like that's and and like acclimatizing yourself and making sure that you're knowable to them yeah. um, is not something that I'm uh, unfamiliar with. Um, oh. and it's not to say that like, you know, like the British sense of humor, um, <laughs> for instance, is something that I had to get used to because yeah. like, British people will just make like, you like, if you ask, so here's, if you ask an, uh, an American person, like what time is it? They'll go, oh, well, it's this time here, but in central time, it's like this. And how can I help you more with that time? <laughs> you ask a British person what time it is. They'll be like, oh, wouldn't you like to know? Right. Like, well, like, actually, oh. yes, I would. Right? Yeah, yeah, I would. They'd be like, oh, high time, you got to watch. And you're like, oh, thanks. Yeah. But, like, actually, like, what time is it? Like, cool. Um, and so, and, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I absolutely love, like, the, like, the, like, the, the bands. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I, yeah. I love it that does, humor. It does take getting used to, though. It takes it getting used to. It takes getting used to. So, so I was aware of that, not specifically at, like, at that place, but, mm. like, just generally, because yeah. that was, that was one of the first jobs I had moving over here. Um, so, generally, I was aware of that um but um but i think it's like 
the process of, and this this happens whether you're, you know, culture. I think is anything that happens between two people, like yeah. more than two people. You know, like I have a culture between me and my me and my my husband, me and my son. Yeah. Like there are things that I say to him, and he knows exactly what I mean because that's a culture that we have between. It's For like sure. that shorthand, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so so whenever you feel like you're the only one, <laughs> or you're the new one, or whatever, like try to find common ground, and that's what I always do. I always try to find some common ground between like me and whoever it is I'm speaking with. Um, so I, I had this, I've, I've talked about this at a, at a university before, and there's a photo of like a woman who spoke at, at an event, um, with a team I was working with, a woman I worked with and, um, and my boss at the previous place. And mm -hmm. you can look at the pictures, you can say, well, the woman who's a speaker, and you look at the thing and you say, well, who has the most in common with me? Yeah. Right. And someone would assume that it was the woman who was, a, who was a speaker, um, and she's a black woman and she works in digital marketing. There's a lot of things that are, that are there, there, yeah. there, like fantastic. And, and she's amazing, uh, by the way, she was fantastic. Um, and, um, and so that there's, there's a lot of things there. Right. Um, uh, but she's also, she was also uh, German. Um, mm. so like, that's something I don't have in common with her. Yes. Um, uh, but then the, ne the next person was somebody who I worked with, um, who, uh, who I worked with and like, and I have like lots of things in common with her. We both work at the same place. Um, you know, we're both women in, in that workplace um, and things, but like those two people actually have things in common and that they were both, they both live in the country that they were, that they were, uh, that they were born in. Yeah. For instance, like I don't. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the last person that it was, the, the last person, uh, the man, the man, um, my boss, um, that, the man, he is a man, so I don't have that in common with him, but he's a parent, so I do have that in common with him. Yeah. He also went to the same university as me, so there's there's something I have there. All mm -hmm. of us work in digital marketing, so that's a common common ground for all of us. Yes. But like, you know, find, I think, try to find find the common ground. So I think like, the, particularly when you're in a new team or when you're meeting new clients or when you're, um, when you're in a new country even. Yeah. Um, and even when like, you're on vacation and you're in a new country and you mm -hmm. find a new, like find a new, new common ground, try to find things that are, the, things that will, that, that, that will be in common with you, or with you and the other person. And this, a lot of times will come up in like small talk. So when I would yeah. meet new clients working in, like working in an agency, they, while we're waiting for the coffee and tea, like make chit chat, like, what you do at the weekend? Like, um, you know, what, uh, oh, hey, have you watched any new box sets? Like something like that, like try to find some of that common ground because that will yeah. help you to make yourself knowable and make the information that you're trying to convey more knowable. So I think that like, for instance, if you say, um, if you find out that that person has a dog, great, that's useful, right? Yeah. You can talk about other dogs. You can, you know, you can talk about like the challenges of trying to like, trying to like, train a dog yes. or like you know some of those things mm. you can, and you know, also when, like, when you're so so and also like I speak a lot of metaphors and metaphors are really useful because it can make something that seems really complex knowable and then as you try to work through the connections you build up those like synapses right and help yes. the person understand what they're what they're doing so and and you know we talk about like the work we've done but like a lot of that 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 making things knowable practice i learned like from like teaching my kid and right. that so it, so i always say that like all experience is valid like think about all of your experiences valid don't discount any experience that you've had that experience has helped you make you, be you and has and okay. that has helped to inform like who you are like in your head so think about all of the experiences as valuable and as as important um and never ever discount your your experiences I love that. Amazing. Empowering. <laughs> what exactly what I need on a Friday morning. Like, yes. I'm going to go into the rest of my day like, yeah, every experience matters. <laughs> it does. It does. It does. Um, so following on kind of like with your LinkedIn, I kind of I've noticed that you you have had like quite a few different roles. You moved around quite a bit. You kind of had the pattern of like moving around every few years. Was that something that was like intentional for you or was that very much like going with the flow these opportunities arose at certain times what kind of like triggered those moves so I think it's quite common for people to move around a little bit um yeah. I was at the I was at the council for like five years yeah. um I was at um I was at uh, my role with hers agency for a good few years as well there were a couple of like I think also there's like structural changes that happened yes 
So I think that like you look at most people who are working in the, in the UK in 2008, there's probably some shifting around that happened <laughs> because there was a lot of, yeah. a lot of shifting around that happened after the 2008 thing. Um, so, so yeah, I think that that, that happened. Um, and I, and, and I think that it's important to be flexible in your career. I think a lot of people think that, you know, I'm going to be, uh, this and that that's what they're going to be for the next yeah. 25 years. But I think that when, what I tend to think about it is, you know, and I, and I put myself into all of my teams, um, like, like as much as I absolutely possibly can and, um, and all the projects that I work on. But what I what I find is that you know that you have to think about the skill set that you're building, and as mm. as you go along in whatever you do, because um, you know I think we were talking about ChatGPT and ChatGPT is super fantastic and amazing or whatever. But like our brain has so many like so many neurons, so many synapses, so many capabilities, like so many things. So like invest in that, invest in your in the skills that you have as you build. And particularly within digital marketing, if you are able to, if you're you're able to like build on skills as you go along, then you yeah. can have flexibility. So I think that some of that, um, some of some of like with regards to my career career trajectory, every single time that I've done anything, it's always been in order to like increase my skills and increase like, um, uh, you know how I can how I can you know be more effective in the things that I do, and. Yeah. I think that um, if you find that you're in a situation like, for instance, um, you know, where something's been acquired, which I've been in that situation before mm. where, um, you know, budgets have shifted around and I've been in that situation before yeah. where, um, you know, where that where things have changed around that that way. Um, I think that that's, you know, remember, remember who who you are and remember what your goals are with regards yeah. to your career. Also, it's very important to to build up credits. So think about like, you know, as you're doing things like Keepa, and and this was something. So I worked at Tommy, uh, which is a toy company, and um, I had a fantastic manager, Mark, um, and he was talking about, and he he had a ring binder back yeah. in the day. He had a ring binder, and he would go and he would print out um, photos at like at. So we had a, we were working on like accounts like Thomas the Tank Engine and Chuggington and a special agent Oso and um and Dinosaur Train and stuff like that. Yeah. And um and you know we managed the licenses for them and the toy distribution and et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, um we were doing and and so sometimes we'd have people would say, oh how how's the marketing for Chuggington going? And he'd like pull out the book and like he had this like <laughs> massive PowerPoint. It was like a 300 slide PowerPoint or something oh of everything. But he would literally just every time he would add it to the thing and he keeps a record of all of it. So at any time anybody was asking, like, oh, what's going on? It's like it's here. It's right yeah. there. It's there. It's there. It's there. Um, and like, well, I don't think you necessarily need to print out every piece of paper right now. <laughs> um, it is really important to keep keep a record of your achievements and to to mark your contributions to yeah. different things. I think on team projects, it can be a little bit tricky to like hang on to like what was your idea or what mm. was your what was your impact or whatever. But like, think about when when you're doing things. Think about think about like how you can position that. So particularly with SEO clients, um, marketing clients, um, get the before shot. Like yeah. make sure you get the before because yeah. everybody loves the before and after. But make sure you get a screenshot of like we were ranking at, you know, yeah, forty five, and now we're ranking at four, and you're welcome. Like make sure that you get those in in. Sure. Make sure that you like make sure that you keep a record of like how it all flows through, um, so that you can see that through. And that's really useful for for speaking to clients. That's really useful for thinking about how you can progress in your career. That's really useful for you know picking yourself up if you're like oh I'm like feeling like mm, like yeah. go look at go look at your brag book like like yeah. remember who you are get back to yourself um, so I think that that's um, that's that's something that's that's really really useful um, so yeah that's that always I think with regards to wherever you move because a lot of people um, change change roles sure. um, but always remember that like your like think of think of it as like your career portfolio so your it's your portfolio and your skills that you're yeah. Building. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And I think it's something quite powerful, actually, in terms of having that that physical binder of being able to like really see it for, for what it is, for sure. Um, and I love that advice in terms of like really like following and honing in on your skill set, because I think people and I think it's quite a natural thing to do is that you get really into the flow of like the title or like the job position and wanting to see the progression up essentially 
um, without actually thinking like, is this actually the best use of my skill set? Like, could there be a position horizontally, which is still, it's still a promotion within itself. Do you know what I mean? But just because maybe the title attached maybe is less appealing maybe than like going like straight up. But I do, I do think, you know, in terms of like bringing joy into your work life, that's naturally going to happen when you're challenging yourself, but you're also really confident in what you're doing and, and you've, and you feel empowered by what you're doing. Entirely. Um, and tapping into your skill set and saying, yeah. how can I be of most use in this situation is a really powerful thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the best pieces of advice that I got, and it was from a friend, um, was, was follow the, like, go through the doors that open. Like, go yeah. through the go through the doors open and the, and I think that with particularly with digital marketing like sometimes you need to be somebody who who like falls down rabbit holes and I think that it's best if like the rabbit hole you're going like that you that you want to go down the rabbit hole yeah. that you're like you're like you're like YouTube oh I'm gonna crack YouTube like you know what I mean and you're like I, and you're like yeah. I've got something and, and like and you get that that you know you get that buzz from like getting the views or getting the For things sure. or whatever so you so so if 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 that is where you f where you feel like most invigorated of like you know YouTube or social or SEO or or technical implementations, you know that if that's where you feel most invigorated, like go with that, and you yeah. will see more growth more quickly than if you go with something that's like uh, it just it's not like it's not it doesn't come like maybe it doesn't come naturally to you, or maybe you just don't have a natural affinity for it or something yeah. like um and 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 it's not to say that you can't get there. Um, but, but very often if you, if you find something that's, that you find like particularly satisfying, like, I don't know, I know people who really like really jam with, with PPC, like they're just yeah. like, they're just like, oh, just love, like, <laughs> and look at that ROAS, yes, yes. Like, <laughs> ROA, yes. anyway, um, <laughs> so like people who like really jam with that yeah. and, um, and like, I, you know, I can see it. there's a lot, of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like, bing um, yeah. on, the, on that. So, so, and there's some people who are just like, this is. This is literally like this feels like hell, <laughs> right? Right. So, so, and I think if you if you hone in on the thing that you really like, then very often you'll be you'll you can inform the other stuff, but from that perspective, yeah. Um, and and it will make it, and also you will learn how to learn things more quickly because you're learning something that you want to learn. So if you have to do something that you're not yeah. that into, which sometimes you know clients are like, we want to do this thing, and you're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 no, for sure. And that's why, but you can take you can take the way that you learned how to learn the thing that you like to learn and apply it to the thing that is new or is maybe not your favorite thing, so that you can get get um get the 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 growth that you want to see more quickly and um in a more effective manner. Yeah, completely love that. Um so as we mentioned, you've actually you've been in the industry now for, for for a few years. You've seen kind of the highs, the lows. Uh, what do you think the SEO industry does really well? Like, what's one of the things where you're like, I love that my industry is like this. Um, I really love how how people respond to to change, innovation. I love how people embrace. And I love also experimentation. So, you know, mm. people, you know, in the last six months, the last uh, little while, I mean, you know, AI, um, AI generative search has like really rocked the world, yes. um, particularly rocked like the SEO world. And it's not to say that people haven't been using generative um, generative AI for years because we have, um, it's not to say that Google hasn't been using it for years because yeah. they have. It's not to say that that, that isn't the case, but um, the ChatGPT feature, for instance, is something that, you know, has been really a real game changer, really. The, how how easy it is to use mm. um and i think that what i what i love is when is when seo as a community is like what is this new cool thing what happens if i do this what happens if i do this i tried this like that i've experimented like this see what happens if you do this and someone's like what if you do that and you go oh i'll try that yeah. let me see about this so you know there's people like um uh, mark williams cook for instance was running mm -hmm. a AI website for ages and was like, I've been running this AI website for ages. It's indexed. It seems to be getting traffic and like, well, let's see what happens. And then there was an update and then the Google, then it changed and things like that. Um, you know, I saw somebody else who was experimenting with video, um, video uh, indexing pages. Mm -hmm. And someone said, oh, what if you try it like this? What if you try it like that? I love 
all of the experimentation that happens within our team or within within the industry. And I think that that's really, really good. Um, I also really like um, the communities within there, within um, the industry. And I think that yeah. there's that there's a lot of a lot that, that comes from that because SEO is something that can be, you know, with regards to like how to learn SEO, people say, you know, it's 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 a tricky thing. Yes. Because because it's you can take a course and the course mm-hmm. is great and they give you a good grounding, but really you have to have some hands-on experience. Yes. And and there's a lot, um, you know, the Women in Tech SEO and women. I'm a, I've been a mentor twice for the Women in Tech SEO uh, mentoring program, for instance, and it's incredibly rewarding um, yeah. to be a mentor, and um, it's incredibly challenging to be a mentor. Um, incredibly valuable to be a mentor. I've had two fantastic mentees, um, in both cases, and I think that 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 mentorship uh, uh, aspect is is really, really important. And very often that can come from within your team. So mm-hmm. we're an agency like Viaduct, for instance, <laughs> very often what will happen is you will have sort of junior folks who come in and, and, and dear juniors who are listening to this podcast, <laughs> like if they tell you to like, just input the stuff, just input the stuff. <laughs> like, like if they tell you like, do this, 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 and this, do the things because you, that's how you learn. Yeah, and and you and you see how how it goes through. So there's lots of um. So so there's lots of you know mentoring that happens within teams. Mm. And, and I think if you're somebody who's junior, um, it can be important to you know if you want to learn something new. If you're like if you're looking at this AI stuff, and you're like, hey, I really want to like get much better at prompting or something. Like it's like tell your team, tell your team that you want to learn that thing. Yes, and and tell them that that like, hey, I'm really interested in this. I think it's going to be a really good idea. And just explain the business case, like why it's valuable. <laughs> like say, you know, I think if we did this, then we would be able to like offer this new service. Yes. Be able to do this for our clients or something to that effect. And then, and then, um, you know, they'll be like, yeah, sure. Let's put you on a course. Because yeah. You can become that person for that thing. That's for one of the sure. other things I love about, about, about SEO um, uh, as a, as a, as a discipline is that like, you know, there's they some of the methods are the same but very it's very rare that i have a day that's the same from yeah. day to day between like you know the different clients you're working with mm-hmm. or you know the different techniques or like or like google's got a new update and now yes. do this or like, <laughs> um or oh on google maps they're doing this oh i just saw that this other thing is on mm-hmm. here like that sort of thing so there's constantly you're constantly learning new stuff um, and and you're constantly constantly building on the skills that you have and using the experience that you have in order to inform the the um, the work that you're doing every day, which I think is great. For sure, for sure. I definitely I think that for me was because I'm relatively new into the industry. I've only really been around it for the last two or three years, and what I loved was that sense of openness in community like there's such a culture of like sharing like what has someone learned about this or does anyone know about this and you really quickly kind of see kind of who are the people you kind of need to be in touch with and see that and I think that that is really really brilliant and like it's it's a lot less intimidating to come into it um which is which is really nice um which actually leads me to my next point because you actually have an incredible website that is full of resources honestly whenever i see crystal she's like oh yeah check out this guide on my website <laughs> okay yeah no i've got a resource for that just check it out on my website and i just i think it's just brilliant and you've got like a specific like resource hub, resource hub even by kind of female and non-binary contributors. I believe there's like 85 tools and resources, 100 now. A hundred, yeah, yeah. I yeah. love that. Yeah. What, can, tell me a bit about like your inspiration behind that. Like what, what like made you say like Crystal, like, I need, I need to do this. Okay, so on Twitter, people are always like, oh, who are the, like, oh, who are women in SEO I should follow? And, every, and like, people are like, these folks, we made a list, like, yeah. Yeah, list. Um, and stuff. So, so like, and there are, like, multiple lists. It's like, here's yeah. seven lists um, and stuff. And people are like, um, people are like, oh, we can't find speakers. Oh, we can't find things. And I'm like, and then, like, look at here. Like, it's not just that. So when I joined Women in Tech SEO, um, the thing that floored me was that, was that, it was like lots of women in, and, and I, I literally cannot stress the importance of like finding your crew. Mm-hmm. And it could be even a group chat, 
but like yeah. I cannot I cannot stress the importance of finding your crew because um when I when I was working at my agency um um and they were a great team they were fantastic but I was like pretty much the only girl that yeah was in my team um and and then I found Women in Tech SEO and I was like oh here's a bunch of people who were the only girl working in their team yeah. so it's like maybe you're the only one in that room but you're not the only one in that you're not the only one who's the only one in the room For and sure. I feel like that's incredibly powerful yes and I think that um that what I found from that is that it, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in a room with Cindy Crom, who's my hero. Like mm. been, I'd been like setting all this stuff on like mobile, mobile SEO, mobile search or whatever. And they were like, who do you, who do you find? I was like, Cindy Crom, she's great. And then Cindy Crom was like, thanks. And I was like, <laughs> and she was like, hey, we should have a call. I was like, okay. Fun by men. <laughs> um, and, um, and I just fangirled at her for like 10 minutes. Um, she's that. super nice, by the way, and like continues to be super nice. And like, yeah, Cindy's the best. Um, and also like Lily Ray is there. And Lily Ray's handle in the Women in Tech SEO thing is like imposter syndrome police. Yeah. And like, and I was like, Lily Ray is amazing. She was like, hey, girl. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> and it's just, and then just like, I'm sorry. Like, it's not just that it's not just that it's a women in tech SEO group but like also like the folks in this group are literally like some of the best SEOs in the world mm. full stop yeah and like and like yes women of course yes they're women of course and like that that I'm sure in fair and forms like why they're some of the best women in the world or best um, SEOs in the world yeah. but like also so the best um, best SEOs in the world just full stop yeah. um it's like when people it's like when people say, "Oh, Andy Murray, you're the first one to win Wimbledon back to back." He's like, "I'm the first man." Yes, <laughs> yeah. I love Shout that. Shout out Serena Williams. Like, Absolutely. Let's <laughs> not disrespect the Williams sisters, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, so I put this resource together because it's like it's not just that like women are great speakers. It's not just that women are great SEOs, but like we build, like women are yeah. building amazing stuff. Like Cindy Crum, for instance, like has like a couple of tools, like the SEO pro extension, like from Christina Zrenko is like, is like the best Chrome extension. Like there, there are amazing courses, you know, Tim has got a fantastic course on there. Um, yeah. Christina Lavasser like pretty much taught me GA4 with her, like with her um, GA4 uh, data studio things. I love that, um, yeah. Lazarina, like Lazarina's um, with her, she's got a fantastic thing. Uh, Lazarina Stoy has a fantastic like Google Search Console um, uh, API mm. um, data studio. I'm sorry, Looker Studio. <laughs> Names change a lot. <laughs> like maybe actually by the time this is out, like all They'll of change it is it wrong. Back. <laughs> so Google, Google Business Profile um, was Google My Business on yeah. their web. Like you would Google Google Business Profile, and it would say Google My Business for yeah. like months. I was like, y'all ain't even changed it. Why are you making me change it? <laughs> Anyways. Um, but yeah, there's like literally amazing stuff. And so every, like, basically every time I come up on a, like a, on like a milestone of my followers, I'm like, I'm like, let's pick, like, let's, let's add some more folks to it. So, and, and people get in touch. They're like, put my podcast on. I'm like, okay, like, I'll put your like podcast yeah. and like, people are doing amazing things, podcasts, resources, newsletters, like, like a latest solicitor's newsletter yeah. is like the biggest it's newsletter. Incredible. Like, and it's, like, yeah. and, like She's a woman. She's also the best, like one of the best SEOs in the world. Like, come on, come through. Like, and I'm just like, recognize like what the work that people are doing. Cause yeah, people are amazing, yeah. But... The achievement isn't because they're women. It's just because they're really good at what they do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and like, and like, like, and like, as I say, like all experience is valuable. Like one of the things, like one of the ways I got really into SEO was like way back in the day, I had a like food blog. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, but like, I think I've, I've been thinking about this a lot. I think people from niche communities, Mm. um like are very much aware of that like the like that like of how like just searching like about of how like the search on google and like search and stuff it like, doesn't always satisfy what you need so like if you're mm. looking for like vegan if you have to like you can't just look up chocolate cake you have to look up vegan chocolate cake right or if you have to look up like nut free chocolate cake or gluten free chocolate cake or like yeah. whatever it may be then you start to learn that like there are niche communities because they will niche down like right like for instance, like the like I can't if I'm if I'm vegan or whatever, then I would look up like Happy Cow. Happy Cow is a specific directory for yeah. like vegan and vegetarian food. And then you understand like how there are sections of the internet. So so like yeah, like being, you know, if you're if you're a woman, if you're from a different community, if you're from a community that's not necessarily served, always served by the mainstream. Yeah. And you're gonna be much more familiar with the fact that like there are nuances to how mm. people search, there are nuances to how people discover information 
because people yeah. have specific needs. If yeah. you if you can get everything you ever need in the in the world from like from like you know like giant mainstream things, and like maybe you might not be as as aware of that. Um, sure. So so like I, yeah, all experience is valuable. Valuable all experiences. Useful. Yeah, that's that's honestly that's so interesting because I'd never thought about it like that, but it actually makes the most sense because yeah you become better at finding the prompts that are going to get you to where you need to be which means you have a better understanding yeah yeah it it all it it all just gels together makes sense <laughs> love that um okay can i ask you what's been one of like kind of like a career highlight so far if you can put it down to one if one is too hard you can give me a couple <laughs> um so i had an amazing time um, i've done i've done um two google um interview series uh and things um both with martin split um and they were fantastic so um we did one remotely where i was talking about like the relationships between seo and devs i've got an article on that um <laughs> that talks about that um, and also, um, and also, I did another one that was talking about like redirect train chains, uh, yeah. um, which is like a little bit technical, but it's also just like oh my god, stuff. like it's like it sounds technical, but it's like it's basically just like just when it's basically just for anyone's wondering what a redirect train is. Essentially, where like you say, hey, I'd like to go to this web page, and they're like, no, go to this one. I mean this mm -hmm. one. I mean that one. I mean that one. And you're just like, oh my gosh, wait, I just want to land on a page that works. Right. <laughs> and this is what and so, and so basically google looks at that and they go this is a hot mess and they go somewhere else like <laughs> yeah they're like we're just gonna we're just gonna take you out of this <laughs> right never mind how about no um so so essentially like um so we talked about that and yeah. the, both of those were re really fantastic and it's been really um really great um the team at google are fantastic and it's and um it's been really good working with them also 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 i cannot 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 stress enough i'm um, working with my wix team like has been so so, so brilliant um i really do love my team um yeah. so i work with uh, morty and george on the on the seo hub we do the podcast we do webinars um we do you know working with contributors to to the hub um, they're both so fantastic and they they work so hard to make sure that we're communicating well and it's also like um the team who who are behind the wix seo tools the you know the enthusiasm that everyone brings mm. to to creating those tools is is absolutely it's absolutely one hundred percent genuine and one hundred percent um just rooted in making sure that we make like kick ass products for our yeah. team or for our users and make sure that like SEO is really accessible to lots of people. Sure. We have some you know we've rolled out some with some amazing updates um recently and and it's amazing to be part of of the the process there and, yeah. I'm, I, and i'm a very small part of the process of with regards to like building and things but like we you know we run you know we discuss things a lot and i'll say oh what if we could have, have this as well that'd be really cool for that yeah. it's very it's very collaborative it's a very collaborative relationship and i am ever in awe of you know how they're able to roll out like update after update after yeah. update yeah um, and just crushing it every time so we've got like google search console integrated into so there's so when you make a Wix website, and I tested this when I built my yeah. website where I have the resources, et cetera. And so I built my website, I made it live and I didn't connect it to Google and I left it live a couple of weeks or something. And I, then I did the search operator and I was like, is this site on Google? Google's like, we don't, I don't know you. And I was like, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. This was my, yeah. this was my whole plan. And and then I um and then I uh and I had no I set up no backlinks to it. I didn't even link it from my profile or whatever. Yeah. And and um and then I used the when you complete the SEO setup checklist, it says connect to Google. Right. And and what it does is it indexes your homepage and it, okay. and it sets up a Google search console prof, pro, uh, property for you straight away with your and submits your sitemap at the same time. So it does all of this at the same time. Um, and and they were like, we can index it like like instantly. I was like, come on now, that's not oh my yeah. God, man. You have to wait weeks for Google to come around, like for to be sure. like you just so sit like around give, waiting. Give you the props right. that you deserve. And you're like, Please. And they're like, and you're like no, come on. I like, did it perfect. I promise. Right, right. I'll give you candy. No, like it doesn't. So, 
So, you, so, and I, that's what I've experienced previously, but like I clicked the button and then the next day I checked it and like all of the links that I had for my homepage were indexed because basically index is your homepage. So if you have your internal links, y'all put your internal links on your website. Um, yeah. So if you have your internal links through there, then it crawled. So like it was, it crawled all the way through. So all the ones from my homepage were there. And then like within a couple of weeks, like all of the rest of them were all through there um, and stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh. So that's available for like always websites. And then, then, so that's the Google search console integration. That's, that, that's years old. This um, within the last like year or so since I've I've been there, then they added the Google Search Console integration into the site inspection tool, so you can inspect all of your things and you can see whether or not the rich results are there. You can see right. if it's indexed. You can see if it's like from Google Search Console. Then they added another thing where you can see your impressions and your things like on the dashboard. Then they added another thing where you can add in like <laughs> reports and stuff. And and my favorite feature, my favorite feature, can I just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please, I'm I mean, go for it. I mean, your enthusiasm is infectious. <laughs> so my last, then, so then the, the next one was, you have a thing, so you, so you, on the site inspection, you can see like which pages are indexable or what, and which pages are like, like you have rich results, which all of that sort of stuff. You can search, not with regex, you can just search, you can just put in like shoes and it will search and it will filter the results yeah. With you, then wherever it sees shoes in the title, in the in the meta description, or like in the, or in the title, in the URL, in the wherever you don't have oh, to, like wow. you know if you go in Google Search Console and you're yeah, like shoes yeah. and they're like what do you mean by query or do you mean by <laughs> URL or do you mean by a contains? I want it all. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like no, but that gives you all of that, and I'm just like oh my god, I'm like this is better than Google Search. Console. Yeah. <laughs> And I just like, yeah, so like they did that. And I was like, y'all got filters? And they were like, yes, calm down. Yes, I love that. In. I love um, that. Well, I love that one yeah. of your career highlights is what you're currently doing. I mean, that's brilliant. And I think that really goes to show kind of, I guess kind of exactly, it, it ties back to what we were saying a lot earlier, wasn't it? It's like, if you just like really look at kind of, you benchmark where your skills are, where your interests lie, like, it will kind of come together in this way that just makes sense and you and you get to really enjoy what you do yeah and i think that if you're vibing with your team like you can like you can do anything like honestly, yeah. if you're... i do actually th i think i think you could really be put in anything but it really depends what your team is like that makes i think all of the difference you spend I mean, even in, in these times of like remote working, you are still spending so much of your time and you're tied to these people, right? Especially when you do have these projects, you know, like you are you are in it together. And I think it is really important that you have, you foster these, these good and healthy relationships and you're not, you know, resenting the people that you're working with because there's nothing worse. There's nothing worse. Like when you get to that point, you know, you should, probably start asking some some serious questions like <laughs> but I think and I think you know it's like it can be tricky when things are like busy and stuff like that but I think it's really important to 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 find a team that like that you know fits with like how you are and to and to connect to connect with your team support your team um support their growth and 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 um, and all of that because yeah like you can you can you know move mountains um for sure and absolutely agree love that um we're getting to kind of like the end of the episode but before we close um i want to do a little would you rather game okay uh just you know get get to know you maybe even better on a make i was gonna say on a more personal level but i feel like we've really gone there today so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the this is like the fun bit so first of all would you rather sea or mountain I like both. I like I like snowboarding and I like the fresh air in the mountains and stuff. But I'm also like I'm like I want to be a mermaid. Like I just want to like swim. Like yeah, like, you know, and just like look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Like that's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to like. Yeah. I think okay. 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 On balance. On balance. <laughs> probably see. Probably see. So, yeah, I, I, to be fair, I thought that was going to be you were going to straight say C to me. So I, no, I, I, I love, love to know that you know you you snowboard. I didn't know that. I've I've been snowboarding. Um, I yeah, I love I love snowboarding. Uh, we, the first time I went snowboarding, we printed out a list of like top ten tips to snowboard from Google and just went up a mountain. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, bold. That is not how did that work out for you? I fell over. It was fine. <laughs> it's part of the process, isn't it? Yeah, it's okay. Um. We're going to take it back to the industry. Content or technical? 
Probably technical. Mm. Technical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I like I like technical on the site. Like I had a client who who like they were they were lawyers and they just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and yeah. wrote, and wrote, and wrote. Like they, they were just constantly like putting out it wasn't like super like formatted or whatever. Mm. Um and like that's fine. That's great. Like you do you. That's fine. I will I will support you in the background. Like I'll be like the lady sure. like, the mom with the camera. <laughs> like, I got you. like you're doing great, it. sweetie. Yeah, right. That's me. That's me with the SEO. Like, I got it. Let me just I'll just like move this around. We're gonna put that on the API. It's all good. Like amazing. Good. Love that. Okay. Would you rather take like one massive holiday or like lots of mini breaks? Lots of mini breaks. I like we do do that a lot. We do like yeah, yeah, because yeah. like we live in the West Country, so like I'll be like, I'm going to New Key, I'm oh, gonna go nice. swim in the ocean. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm that- gonna go up to North Devon and be like, mm, yay! Like, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna pop down to <laughs> yeah. nice. Okay, this next one I actually think is a tough one: sing or dance. Both. That's yeah, both. I do you know what both. I wrote that one, and I was like, she's gonna say both. She's gonna both, say both. both. Um, also like my, yeah, Ooh. yeah, both, 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 I can't. Yes. I okay. Like, I um, would you rather, okay, it's a weird, what would you rather, maybe what do you find more interesting, the past or the future? I'm a, I'm, I'm a big history buff, actually. Like, I find, like, because also like history informs the future. Like, you can't, yeah, you I can't. Mean agree you don't know what happened you can't understand what you're looking at like you know like so so and also like who knows what the future holds um yeah. and stuff and there's i feel i find i find i feel like I, I get a little bit lost sometimes like trying to think about the future i completely um, agree with you i think because it's so much unknown right and there's comfort in history of that it's happened and yeah so you can be reflective on it and you can look back you can see the lessons you can see you can see yeah you can extract information from it and i think that what what often happens so so with the thing about history is like um is that um and it was at one point in my career like when i was a kid i wanted to be an archaeologist that's how much i'm into history oh, um yeah. and um the the thing about history is that as soon it's as soon as you learn something from like sometimes you'll learn something from history or like you'll learn that some, some historical thing happened yeah. or there, there's been some historical whatever and then and then suddenly you see it everywhere yeah like you're like oh that's and then and then then you're like oh that's what that is and that's what that is that's what that is that's why i think history is like mega yeah i love that amazing um last one sweet or savory if we're talking popcorn and savory sweet (laughs) popcorn is nasty like popcorn is not a dessert you were ready you were ready for that one you were like hey i've got something to say here We're talking salty popcorn. We're talking salty pickles as well. Like, and when I say pickles, I mean like American style pickles. I don't mean like chutneys. Um, I'm talking like pickles okay, because okay. because really like <laughs> okay, so so like in America, like the pickles are salty. If you get like in England, for for if we have any transatlantic people, let me yeah. give you some transatlantic di- di- um, dialogue, some transatlantic <laughs> vocab. Pickle pickles in England are something called like it, it tends to refer to something called chutney, which is like a like a kind of like a jam, but it's got a, got, got like spices and mm. like tends to have multiple things like a relish. It's very close to relish, right? Okay, pickles in America are um, tend to refer to cucumbers which have been fermented in brine of some sort. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, we good. Good. <laughs> We've got the baseline. The, Right. The Amer- American style pickles tend to be salty with dill. And that is correct. The um, the ones that you get in England tend to have sugar in them. And that's gross. So I'm, you know what? I'm so not into pickles at all. That's because you've never had why. good ones. Maybe never that's them. why. You can get good ones. Um, you can get well, good good ones, um, like uh, and uh, like Poland, like Pol- Polish uh, Polish deli will very right. often have some good ones. Um, there's a there's somebody who does who who uh, who has them from a Polish deli like near me, and like I'm like oh yeah, that's my hookup. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> um, because but yeah, um, but I spend a lot of money on subpar pickles over over my time in England, so that's that's a thing that I, sh- I struggle with. So yeah, savory, savory, I would say. Yeah. You know what I had. No idea that that's where that prompt would take us, and I'm so glad that it did. <laughs> that I, I is really, 
the beauty of podcasting people i get so mad when people give me sweet popcorn i'm like oh popcorn and then it's sweet and i'm like Ugh. you know what i used i actually used to be such a sweet popcorn person and i just couldn't and then i did the slow transition with like the sweet and salty combos and then mm-hmm. i have i have now transitioned to right. to savory and i do think it is the better one it's the yeah. better one and yeah. also like i mean like again to our transatlantic listeners in america if you go to the movies they only give you salty popcorn. There is no sweet popcorn in England. Oh, it exist. No, it's not. It's salt with butter. That's what you get at the movies in America. Yeah. In England, sometimes you get salty. Sometimes you get sweet. Sometimes you only get sweet because English people seem to generally prefer sweet mm, popcorn. Interesting. Um, so, so there Love we go. That. A bit of culture there for you at the end. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Amazing. Honestly, Crystal, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast. I'm really, really happy that you accepted the invite because oh, it's been a great conversation. It's been great to get to know you better as well. Have, you know, not be like rushing past each other at an event where it's like, yeah, 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 my website. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything that you would like to plug before we close? Um, we talked about the SEO podcast. Um, I should also say, so on Wix, on the SEO hub, we have lots of information, not just about Wix, but about, about SEO in general from literally some of the best SEOs in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so do come and check that out. Um, there's some amazing insights um, from some amazing people. So do check that out. We also have a monthly webinar our, um, and we, you know, get folks, we, we try to get the best information that we possibly can from people who know um, the the best information about SEO. Uh, we had a really successful one about ChatGPT and AI really recently, which was really mm-hmm. great. All of our webinars are super accessible. So, you know, we have them live and they go on YouTube and they're on the website. So you can see all of the recordings from there. But also we always make sure that there's a practical element to it as well. So you're not just like, it's not just somebody telling you how smart they are. There's also some elements to show you how to do it, whatever. And again, we emphasize like, you know, SEO knowledge, not just Wix knowledge, also Wix knowledge, but, but, but also general, general SEO knowledge. So everyone's welcome. Come through, hang out, have fun. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, no, definitely do go and check it out. It is a really, really helpful hub. Um, So thank you, everyone, for listening. As a quick reminder, make sure that you're following us on socials. That's at Viaductgen on Instagram, Viaduct Generation on LinkedIn and on YouTube. And then at Viaduct underscore Gen on Twitter. Um, thank you so much, Crystal. I look forward to seeing you probably soon. Um, and yeah, and we hope that everyone has a lovely rest of their day wherever you're listening. <laughs>